Free agency is rapidly approaching and for the Eagles it's a crucial time of year. Not only are they set to lose some key players from the last few seasons, but with limited cap space on their side and a lingering Nick Foles drama, it's not exactly helping matters. Big contract decisions and some emotional goodbyes may be in order, but what about additions to the team? In this video, we'll look at some names using Howie Roseman's free agent prototype of a player that's around 28 years old who could sign a prove-it contract to develop younger talent or sign a longer term deal with less upfront money. My name is Liam Jenkins and here are 5 potential free agent targets for the Philadelphia Eagles. Before we get started though guys, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for your support. If you are new around here, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Again, we can't build this community without you. So if you love this kind of content, we need to hear about it. And don't forget, hitting that like button really helps as well. And for your daily dose of Philadelphia sports content, phillysportsnetwork.com is the place to go. We're going to kick things off with Sheldon Richardson, a defensive tackle who's almost a household name at this point. The former Seattle Seahawk and New York Jet was out to prove he was worthy of a big investment in 2018, signing with the Minnesota Vikings on a one-year, $8 million deal. Now, he was able to establish a relatively dominant pairing with Linval Joseph, but he was kind of quiet, all things considered, although his presence as a three-tech run defender once again was heightened. What is interesting, though, is that the Vikings actually fell from the third-ranked run defense to the 15th overall with Richardson in the mix. Conversely, Tom Johnson, who was a backup defensive tackle at that point, tallied the same number of sacks as Richardson, which may, just may, have slightly hindered his free agent value. Now, his fit in Minnesota is evident, but he could also be a great replacement for Timmy Jernigan. Now, if the Eagles shift Jernigan due to his durability concerns, they'll save a whopping $13 million against the cap, and that should be more than enough to get cheaper at the position while still retaining Pro Bowl talent, incentivizing Richardson for a bounce back year. Now, whether this is a one year deal or a longer term option, I think if you look at the form of Sheldon Richardson, he's always been consistent around the 60 tackle sort of mark, and as a prominent run defender, he will be an excellent fit in a defense that prides itself on getting into the back field and smothering running backs before they get a chance to escape to the second level. The next player on this list is arguably my favourite linebacker in the NFL, KJ Wright of the Seattle Seahawks. When he's healthy, he's one of the best linebackers in the league, period. His ability to fly around the field, be aggressive at the point of the catch when in coverage, and more importantly, communicate clearly with the defense to help defuse some potentially explosive situations is second to none. Alongside Bobby Wagner, the two of them have been two of the mainstays of the Legion of Boom, and as a result, have helped carry that tricky Seattle defense through a tumultuous transition. Now, Wright spent most of last year sidelined with a knee injury, and if we look back at how the Seahawks have previously treated guys in his kind of spot, the future doesn't exactly look good. <coughs> oh, Thomas. <coughs> Sorry. There isn't much depth at the outside linebacker position right now, away from Kamuguzia Hill and Nate Jerry. And if middle linebacker Jordan Hicks walks into free agency, then positional depth will be just as scarce. Seattle's Walter Payton Man of the Year Award nominee is a stand-up guy on and off the field, and what the Eagles would love to do more than anything is sign savvy veterans which would allow draftees and younger talent to marinate and grow into their future roles. Wright wouldn't just provide that with a sense of leadership, but his production on the field is rivaled by very few. With four consecutive seasons of over 100 plus tackles, he's arguably the most underrated backer in the league, and the Eagles would be wise to do whatever it takes to bring him in if Seattle do let him walk. Next up on our list is running back Tevin Coleman, Devonta Freeman's long-term running mate in Atlanta. Coleman is a perfect fit for the Eagles, however this all comes down to one thing. Does Coleman low-key really want out of Atlanta, or more importantly, out of Freeman's shadow? There's no denying that Coleman is a starting caliber back in the NFL, and he has the talent and versatility to be among some of the best. You could argue that while his role with the Eagles would give him more exposure, he still wouldn't be the back he's capable of being, which is a true featured rusher. However, his versatility to hurt defenses as an elusive, well-balanced decision maker between the tackles and an explosive receiving option outside make him a very strong fit for an Eagles team that could be finally saying an emotional goodbye to Darren Sproles. Coleman has done nothing but impress every single year and his skill set matches up perfectly with what Peterson implements. But will the price tag be just as dreamy? Only time will tell. 
The 6 foot 1, 210 pound back is coming off an 800 yard season, but combined he actually scored 9 touchdowns, 5 receiving and 4 rushing, averaging 4.8 yards per carry. Make no mistake, as quick and rapid as he is, Coleman is elusive between those tackles. He can really cut defences up when he gets to the second level, and that's what makes him so dangerous. Freeman wears them out, Coleman wraps up the goods, and that's what the Eagles have been missing. They need to find both of those pieces heavily moving into 2019. Losing Ajayi and Sproles leaves just Wendell Smallwood, Corey Clement and Josh Adams on the roster. There is no LeGarrette Blunt anymore, there is no Jay Ajayi, there is no Darren Sproles. That's three of the main backs who contributed during that Super Bowl run and really started this Peterson era off, if you remember back to the days of Ryan Matthews and Darren Sproles. The Eagles desperately need to restructure this committee effort and if there is one back in this league that has committee star written all over him, it's Tevin Coleman. Next up, we've got a big wide receiver hole to fill, and this is something that has been the case ever since the beginning of the Doug Peterson era. If you remember back to the days of Doyle Green Beckham, then the days of Torrey Smith, and most recently Mike Wallace, even Mac Hollins can be filtered into this argument. The Eagles haven't really found that deep speed burner type of guy. Bryce Treggs and Shelter Gibson have been two more names that have failed to live up to that expectation of what they could become. And as a result, the Eagles are left without a wide receiver too that can take the top off a of defense and just run nine routes and gain separation when needed. Enter John Brown. Smokey was on a mission this season to prove he still has it and setting a new career high in yards per reception, Brown proved a lot of the naysayers wrong. One of the most lethal deep threats in the league, Brown's campaign was more than enough to leave Ravens fans purring, but perhaps Eagles fans even more so. It also just so happens that Brown may be looking at one more prove it year contract, and at 28 years old, that sudden Howie Roseman prototype is really beginning to flourish. It's easy to forget that John Brown just a few seasons ago posted a 1,003 yard season in Arizona, and as the Arizona offense started to disintegrate, it was fair to say that Browns played it as well. Now, of course, there are other issues, and that under 300 yard season in 2017 really stung his value. But he proved that an absence or a change of scenery in Baltimore was for the good. And he was able to still deliver those exceptional catches and those long, long receptions that really helped Lamar Jackson flourish. Now let's not forget that Doug Peterson likes to use receivers in jet sweeps and that sort of thing and I think Brown fits that mould perfectly. Not only that, but he has experience as a returner, another area of need for the Eagles and is a proficient special teamer as well. John Brown may be among the more premium receivers in this year's free agent class, but having gone out of his way and proved that he can still deliver that long-term speed, I think there's no decision that the Eagles should absolutely be behooved in bringing him in. And our final name on this list is Trey Boston. Now, in my opinion, it was criminal that Boston didn't receive a long-term contract extension after posting such a strong season with the Chargers in 2017, where he picked off five passes. Bizarrely, the market for safeties that year just dried up without warning. There was no real explanation for it, and Boston's not a bad player. In fact, at Carolina, of course, with the Chargers in 2017 and the Cardinals, he's performed more than adequately and arguably very impressive. So what happened? Why hasn't he got the deal? We don't really know. But he was left to sign a 1.5 million one-year deal with the Arizona Cardinals just as training camp was about to get underway. But again, he proved that that 2017 success was no fluke by any stretch of the imagination. He picked off three interceptions, broke up a further seven, and earned a 78.2 coverage grade on the season via Pro Football Focus. The Eagles need safety depth, and Boston is a dreamboat here. He's fluid in his movement, he's rangy, he's a leader on and off the field, and someone that plays the free safety position with the instinct needed for Schwartz to keep a safety back home while the rest of the defense wreak havoc. At the very worst, he'd be a player groomed until such a time as Jenkins calls it a day. At best, he'd be McLeod's new stud running mate while Jenkins causes a whirlwind in the box. Now, the one thing working against the Eagles here is that Boston isn't likely going to be too happy settling for another prove-it contract. A big payday evaded him in 2018. He's not going to like the idea of settling once more. And I think that's completely justified. His play absolutely deserves that big payout. 
Now, the good news for the Eagles is that they're going to need safety depth anyway. So why not bring Boston in on a three-year deal? Why not maybe look at even a longer-term contract? Because Rodney McLeod's contract is virtually peanut dust at this point. Malcolm Jenkins isn't going to be around forever. They need to start trying to find ways to replenish that safety depth. Because that third safety is so pivotal in this defense. We saw it last, oh, 2017, I should say, with Jalen Watkins and how important he was. The team missed that this year. And it took a while for them to find stability in the form of Avante Maddox when everything else forced him into a corner. Will he sign with the Eagles? I'm not sure. But the fit is certainly a good one. But what do you think, guys? Would you be a fan of any of these players coming to Philadelphia? Are there any names we've missed that you think would be even better fits? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, at LiamJenkins21. And don't forget to come back to phillysportsnetwork.com for your daily dose of Eagles coverage.